so uh, in terms of actually changing temperature you could be asked to calculate things that are going from one physical state to another or you could be asked to calculate things where you're exchanging heat between one object and some other object and when I say object water we don't think about it as an object sometimes but anything liquid is still an object even a gas is an object okay so one substance to another um, so let's use let's, let's look at this one if a five gram sample of ice at negative 10.0 degrees C is heated to a point where it is liquid at 20.0 degrees C how much energy will be required This is where the heating curve is, an, is a really good thing to, to know. In the heating curve for water, you've got the range where we're going, we're heating up ice. So this is where ice is located here. And once you've heated up the ice, where it's going through the melting of the ice, and that happens at zero degrees C, okay, um, there's no temperature change because down here what we're doing is we're, we're looking at the change in temperature and then um, I take that I'm getting heat and temperature okay I'm sorry this is heat down here heat energy and temperature okay so we're adding heat energy and the result is a temperature change there's no temperature change while you're going through the phase change. Then once you get to liquid water, so this is the phase change here. We're going through liquid water, there's, a, there's more heating going up, more, more temperature increase. And we get to the point where uh, this is liquid water. Then during the phase change to steam, there's no change in temperature and once you have the, sub, the stu substance into the gaseous phase then you can heat up the temp heat it up again this is where we have steam here and there's two different kinds of equations five equations but two different kinds of equations in this where we're changing the temperature anytime we're changing the temperature that equation is Q equals mass times specific heat times the change in temperature so that equation applies to this and this and that. And any time we're just changing phase or there's no temperature change, then we've got Q equals mass times change in enthalpy. So that applies here and it applies here. Okay? So only two equations. What's different is the specific heat in all three ranges and the temperature change, I suppose, in these three ranges, okay? Um, and also, um, in, in the change in phase, it's the delta H that's different. That value, that constant is different for these, and that constant is different for these three, three areas, okay? So if we go back to our problem then, we're starting out with ice, and we know that water boils at 100 degrees C, Okay, so if we're starting out with ice at negative 10, we're down somewhere in this range here. We're raising the temperature up to the point where we get it to start to melt, and at that point the temperature doesn't change anymore. We need a different equation. We need this equation in this range, this equation in this range, and then we're going to raise the liquid temperature up to 20 degrees 
So we need this equation in this range. Okay, we've got three different equations to find the total amount of heat. So the Q total for this problem is the amount of energy used to heat up the ice plus the Q used to melt the ice plus the Q used to heat water or liquid water. <coughs> so we have to add all those together. And the Q for heating ice is calculated by mass times the specific heat for ice times the change of temperature for the ice. Okay? The Q for melting the ice, well, let's put melting ice down here. That equation is mass times change in enthalpy. Okay? So we've got Q equals mass times specific heat times change in temperature for, for heating up the ice. Q equals mass times specific heat, I'm sorry, uh, change in enthalpy for melting the ice. And then Q equals mass times specific heat times change in temperature for heating up the water. Okay? So from heating up the water then, We got mass times specific heat times the change in temperature. All right. So let's start with the heating of the ice. Our mass doesn't change. We have five grams of water times the specific heat. Now you don't have to memorize this particular specific heat. I will give you this specific heat if we need it. Okay. And the specific heat for ice is 2.05 joules per gram per degree C. The change in temperature. Change in temperature is always temperature final minus temperature initial. Temperature final, in this case, we're, we're starting at negative 10 degrees, so we can only raise the temperature of ice up to zero degrees C before it starts to melt. Ice will never go above zero degrees C. Okay, so our final temperature while we're heating up the ice is going to be 0, 0.00 degrees C. We can't get any higher than that. And the initial temperature, this one here, is whatever we started at, minus a negative 10.0 degrees C. So our temperature change for the heating up of the ice is 10.0 degrees C. Yes? You have to show me the math to show me you know what where, where those numbers are coming from. Okay, otherwise people tend to plug in all kinds of numbers. I didn't know where you got it from to know what kind of points to give you or I have to count off all the points you could possibly lose. That makes sense? So always show it because then you can get partial credit for something you might miss. Okay, so our temperature change then, this term here, is 10 degrees C. If we put these two terms over 1, then we can clearly see we can cancel out grams and cancel out degrees C. We're left with joules, and joules is a measurement of energy, and that's what we're looking for by heating the ice. We're looking for the amount of energy involved. And we multiply all that together, and we get 102.3 joules. We have to round off properly. This number has three digits. This is our measured number, calculated number, uh, calculated number. They all have three digits. And you only worry about measuring calculated numbers when you're figuring out significant digits in multiplication and division. So we only want three digits in our final answer. That means this five has to be rounded off. Draw an arrow to show a rounding off. Underline the five to show it's supposed to be rounded off. And we get 103 joules. Okay? All right for the range where we're melting the ice. Um, mass is still 5 grams. Didn't change. The enthalpy change for um, heating or melting ice is 2.05, I'm sorry, 334 joules per gram. 
Yes, you don't have to memorize that. The only thing you have to memorize, the only constant in this whole series you have to memorize is this one here, the specific heat for water, 4.18 joules per gram per degree C. And so we just do this math. And we get 1,670 joules. I got three digits here and three digits here. I need three digits here. That means that zero is insignificant. Um, now, I suppose you could argue that that zero is supposed to be considered insignificant anyway. And you'd be right. But I don't want to, I want you to show me you are clear about the fact that we don't want that zero. I want to round off that zero. I want you to show me that. So we have to move our decimal place one, two, three places and round it off to 1.67 times 10 to the third joules. And then there's no question about whether you have three significant digits or not, okay? Let's just say that you wrote this down and inadvertently had a little pencil mark right there. Well, then I have to say you didn't round it off properly because you're showing four significant digits, okay? And so it's always better to do this. Make sense? It's clearer. There's no question about what you mean. That makes sense? Nobody understands? If you understand, your head should be all up and down like this. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Bobbleheads, I like it. What? Well, that would be 10 to the third. We moved it three places to the left, 10 to the third. Okay? All right, so that's our energy all off in the ice. Okay, now we're ready to heat the water. So once we get to that point where we've melted all the ice here, the temperature starts going up. We're heating up the water now. Okay? Temperature didn't rise. It didn't go up at all as long as we're going through just the phase change. So uh, we got five grams again, the amount of water didn't change. Specific heat for water is the one of these constants you have to memorize. That's 4.18 joules per gram per degree C. And the change in temperature then is the difference between the point at which the water starts to melt at zero degrees and the final temperature at 20. Okay. So if we're calculating change in temperature, our temperature final minus temperature initial, temperature final is at 20 degrees. That's what we're getting to. That's where we end up. Minus whatever our starting amount was, and our starting amount was 0, 0.00 degrees C. I shouldn't say amount, I suppose. I should say the starting temperature. So our change in temperature then is going to be 20.0 degrees C. So grams cancel out, degrees C cancel out, we're left with joules, that's what we want to find. And do the math, and you get 400, and, you had a question? 418 joules. Okay? And there's no rounding off to be done here because that has three digits, and these all have three digits. All right, we need to add all these numbers together. We said that the final total energy added to the system, energy required, is Q for heating the ice, Q for melting the ice, Q for heating water. So we have 103 joules plus, uh, let's see, 1.67 times 10 to the third. You might, you could write it like this, 1, 6, 7, and that arrow here to show there's an empty slot there where a zero might be, okay? And then we're also going to add to that 418 joules. And add all this together, and you get uh, 2191 joules. But there's an empty slot here. And when you're adding and subtracting, anytime you add a number to it with it, where there's an empty slot to the right, not to the left, only to the right. Digits to the right, empty slot, Round that off. So we're going to have to write, round this off again and write it in scientific notation. Moving our decimal place one, two, three places to the left. And we get 2.19 times 10 to the third joules. Okay? Does all that make sense? And that's for energy change in water. Okay.
Yes. Mm-hmm.